In 1965 Bell flew the Bell Model 209, the prototype of the world's first dedicated attack helicopter. This machine was specially designed as an escort for troop carrying helicopters to meet a US Army requirement. The whole development was completed in very short terms. Eventually this machine was a turning point in the development of helicopter technology and its application. This armored gunship was a step forward from the previous transport helicopters that carried only defensive weapons. It opened a new era in warfare. Based on the Bell Model 204 UH-1D utility helicopter, the Model 209 introduced a new slim fuselage with a fighter-type cockpit. The pilot sits high in the rear with a co-pilot gunner lower in the front directing the fire of a wide range of weapons mounted on lateral stub wings or under the nose. The US Army liked this machine and the first order was placed in 1966. The new helicopter was designated as the AH-1G. Production commenced during the same year. The Cobra first saw service in 1968. Over 1,000 AH-1GS were delivered in the first four years. This helicopter was often unofficially called the Huey Cobra. It saw extensive service in Vietnam. Furthermore it was one of the most valuable US weapons during that war. Even though the AH-1 is based on the UH-1 Iroquois, little in the appearance of the Cobra shows off its roots. Engine and transmission were borrowed from UH-1. The original version of the Cobra was powered by a single Likoming T-53L-11 turboshaft engine, developing 1100 SHP. This helicopter has a narrow fuselage and was specially designed to be a small target as possible to enemy ground fire. Due to the streamlined shape and lighter weight, the original version had a top speed of nearly double that of the transport helicopters that it escorted. Also this gunship was extremely maneuverable. Prototype of the Bell 209 had a complex retractable undercarriage which made it a very sleek machine in flight. However this idea was eventually dropped for fear of mud clogging the bay and causing potential failures. Production helicopter had simple but tough landing skids. Under the nose there was a turret that could mount miniguns, cannons, or grenade launchers. The turret could pivot to both sides of the helicopter, as well as up and down. The turret was controlled by the gunner, seated at the front. Also the pilot in the rear could fire the turret, if it was locked in the forward position. Early Vietnam models were armed with single or twin 40mm automatic grenade launchers, or twin 7.62mm miniguns. On second-generation models it was replaced by a harder-hitting three-barrel rotary cannon. The Cobra could carry 998 to 1 360 kilograms of weapons on its stub wings. Early production helicopters were fitted with up to four pods with 70mm unguided rockets. These were effective against unarmored targets and light vehicles. The helicopter could also carry BGM-71A tow anti-tank guided missiles, as well as other weapons. During the Vietnam War, the AH-1 took over the role of assault helicopter and tank killer from the UH-1D. It was flying anti-armor mission and was often used to ambush enemy columns. The pilot sits in the rear seat, which is slightly elevated above the front seat of the co-pilot, gunner. The front seat also has a full set of flight controls. The cockpit is surrounded by a light armor protection. Soldiers on the ground contact the pilots via radio and coordinate the enemy positions. Initially in the mid and late 1960s the US Army planned to obtain a proposed Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne attack helicopter. So only a relatively small number of the Huey Cobras was obtained. But when the Cheyenne program was cancelled Bell started work on improved models of the Cobra. Improved models were fitted with two engines. The US Army eventually retired its AH-1 helicopters in favor of the Boeing AH-64 Apache. Overall Bell produced more than 1 600 first-generation, single-engine Cobras, including variants. Later models were progressively improved in the key areas of engine power, performance and armament. In the 1970s twin-engine versions replaced the first-generation, single-engine Cobras. Both single- and twin-engine Bell Model 209s have been widely exported. This helicopter was licensed produced in Japan by Fujibell. AH-1JC Cobra was the first twin-engine version, specially developed for the US Marine Corps USMC. It was introduced in 1971. 
Marines used these helicopters for close-in fire support of landing forces during amphibious assaults and subsequent land operations. The AH-1JC Cobra has Pratt & Whitney T-400 engines, developing 1800 SHP. But the power was limited to 1530 SHP due to helicopter's transmission. The second engine offers additional backup. It was important, considering that marine helicopters fly long distances over the water. In case of failure or damage, the helicopter can limp home with one engine working. In 1974 to 1975 a batch of 202 of these helicopters with tow missiles were supplied to Iran. The Fujibel has produced the AH-1S for the Japan's ground self-defense forces. AH-1Q was an interim U.S. Army version with tow missiles, produced by conversion from AH-1G airframes. AH-1S was a U.S. Army version fitted with a more powerful 1-800SHP T-53-703 engine. It was a production Cobra with tow capability and other improvements. A number of older AH-1Q helicopters were modified to the AH-1S standard, while AH-1S model helicopters were themselves modified into a number of variants. The AH-1S was licensed produced in Japan. Production began in 1984. A total of 89 AH-1S helicopters were built for the Japanese military. By 2022 around 70 of these helicopters remained in service. AH-1P was produced by conversion of AH-1S helicopters with flat plate canopies and other revisions. AH-1F is our upgraded version. In 1987 all surviving US Army Cobras were updated to a common AH-1F standard. AH-1T is an improved tow-capable version of the AH-1JC Cobra. AH-1W Super Cobra is a USMC version. It was adopted in 1986 and is still in service. The Super Cobra was designed to fly and provide fire support in both day and night environment. Its avionics, engines and weapons were substantially upgraded. The AH-1W Super Cobra is powered by General Electric T700 GE-401 turboshaft engines, developing 1725 SHP each. It is armed with a 3-barrel 20mm cannon and carries 750 rounds of ammunition. The cannon fires at a rate of 675 rounds per minute. It can carry additional pods with miniguns on stub wings. The Super Cobra can carry Hellfire or TOW anti-tank guided missiles. It can actually carry both types of missiles on the same mission. Other weapons of this helicopter are pods with various unguided rockets, cluster munitions, napalm bombs, AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-92 Stinger short-range air-to-air missiles, and AGM-122 Sidearm anti-radiation missiles. This gunship also has provision for AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles. This attack helicopter is fitted with a night targeting system, which includes a forward-looking infrared, FLIR, low-light TV camera, laser rangefinder and an auto-track system. Fuel is contained within two fuselage fuel cells. Up to four more external tanks with fuel can be carried for extended range. During the Persian Gulf War a total of 48 AH-1W attack helicopters were used. These destroyed 97 tanks, 104 armored personnel carriers, 16 bunkers, and two anti-aircraft sites. Not a single USMC helicopter was lost. AH-1Z Viper is a recent version. It made its first flight in 2000 and was adopted by the US Marine Corps in 2010. Full-scale production commenced in 2012. Currently it is one of the most powerful, capable, and advanced attack helicopters in the world. This version features a four-bladed rotor, which reduced vibrations by up to 70% and significantly improved flying characteristics. Also there were many other changes. Most of the AH-1Z Vipers are upgraded form the previous AH-1W Super Cobras. About one-third are newly built helicopters. It is planned that the AH-1Z will serve well into the 21st century.